everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm the booktuber behind Peace Love Books and today I'm here to share with you some of my favorite meet cutes from various romances that I've read. I think the meet cute is the one of the most important parts of a romance because it really sets the tone for the relationship and how things are going to go and a lot of times it sets the plot rolling and determines if these people are going to be hate to love, second chance, or something else fun that the romance is going to deal with. So I'll go ahead and get to some of my favorite meet cutes in romances. The first one I have is Sailor Proof by Annabeth Albert and in this one the one hero is a naval chief officer and he wants to get revenge on his ex so when he is coming home he wants someone to act like a boyfriend who has a really great welcoming for him. Arthur is the one he turns to to help him with this revenge on his ex I guess you could call it and their reunion is so believable that it goes viral. So the two end up realizing that they kind of might like each other more than just strangers who have never met but have to act like they're madly in love. Love. The next one I have is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez and in this one are heroine and hero meet by crashing their cars into each other and then they realize they are actually both best friends of each other's best friends significant others. So her best friend is getting married to his best friend and they're going to be in a wedding together and they realize that they were just into an accident with each other. They end up having to spend a lot more time with each other planning the wedding and grow feelings but they are definitely friends before they're lovers and it's very adorable. Then I have Two Houses by Selena Biba and this one is a childhood rivals to lovers which I love that trope and I feel like I can never find that in books so I love that that's in here. They are both actually representing different auction houses and they have to now in the present day compete with each other to win over an art collection. So they have to spend a week at the owner's estate and so it is kind of forced proximity now childhood enemies to kind of rivals to lovers and it's just fabulous. Then we have I Think I Might Love You by Christina C. Jones. In this one our heroine is thinking that she is staying at her sister's apartment, comes in and finds a man and she freaks out and ends up trying to attack him. Turns out her sister is subleasing the place and he actually lives there and she was attacking the guy who lives there and it is so funny and it just sets the tone for this entire book and then he ends up being a vet and she has to serve community service at his office so they keep on running into each other. Not really enemies to lovers but we definitely started off on the wrong foot rom-com kind of romance. Then we have Sweet as Pie by Alicia Hunter Pace. These uh, people actually knew each other as children. The heroines always had a crush on him. He is a hockey player but he is back into town and makes a bet with a friend that he will not fall for anyone while he's in town. The heroine actually owns a pie shop and the hero actually uh, chose her cousin over her in the past so there's a lot of animosity there. They reconnect over pie and it's super cute and they end up kind of falling for each other even though he really doesn't want to and she is still hurt over what had happened in their past. Then I have The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This one's been super popular lately but I personally love it and our hero and heroine both work in academia. She is a student and he is one of the professors and he has a lot of students that he works with and he's not really well liked because he's very tough as an advisor and our heroine was dating someone and she doesn't really like him but her friend really likes him but her friend doesn't want to step on her toes. She's like no you're dating him and she's like no it's totally fine. So to convince her friend that she really doesn't like that guy she pretends to have a boyfriend, kisses the first person that walks in the room and it is our professor and they end up fake dating but their meet cute was hilarious because they have to act like they're dating in front of her friend and they've never really talked before and so that is a perfect meet cute to start this up to start up the whole fake dating aspect of the book and then actually end up falling for each other. Then we have One Hot Italian Summer by Karina Halley. This one is pretty serious in the beginning. Our heroine loses her writing partner and she really doesn't know how to write anymore because she had passed away and she's in a rut of how to even write a new book so her agent sends her off to Italy to write in this villa and try to get some inspiration back and so our heroine's sunbathing without clothes on because you know it's a private villa she's at a pool it's her private property and a man and his son walk in and she's horrified what is going on and the man and the son are actually staying at this villa as well and she had no idea so they had a definitely an interesting meet cute but that leads them to having to share this villa together and her falling in love with a single dad and he's an artist and she's a writer trying to get over her grief and try to get inspiration for writing again then we have then came you by lisa Kleypas, and this one the beginning is so 
so funny and really sets the stage for the romance. Our heroine does not care what society thinks at all and she ends up losing her hat and just jumping overboard of this boat in the middle of the river to get her hat back and the hero sees her and he is instantly just hates her. He's like, that is appalling. No way a woman should act in society whatsoever. But he's actually trying to court her younger sister and in the process ends up falling for her instead. Even though he really detests how she acts in society from her jumping off a boat to get her hat, which no lady should ever do in society. And it just sets the perfect stage for their romance for the rest of the book. Then I have Forever and Always by Beverly Jenkins. Beverly Jenkins always writes such unique historical romances. They normally take place in America. Our heroine has to take a bunch of women to be mail order brides for men who are living the place where her cousin is. And so he asks her to help escort all these women. She needs a wagon master though. She needs a man who can drive a wagon and plan their trip and safely get them to this other state because they're going across multiple states and so her original wagon master ends up dying unexpectedly and she needs a new one she hears about this man so she goes to track him down tracks him down to a brothel and tries to uh, like introduce herself and ask him for help and he mistakes her for a worker there and things um don't go as planned and she is instantly butts heads with him she is so disgusted by him and she's just like i need you to get me to this place and just listen to me and he's like no I'm the professional you need to listen to me because I know what I'm talking about and they get so angry with each other and that just sets the perfect tone for their romance and it's so funny how they meet and everyone's just like why did you go to that place to find him and she's like I can do what I want and I needed him so I was gonna go in there and get him and it was just so funny and I love this romance so much I never hear anybody talking about this historical romance from Beverly Jenkins I think it's one of her underappreciated ones or under read ones and everyone needs to read it. And those are some of my favorite meet cutes. Let me know in the comments if you have any other favorite moments where the couple meets. And a lot of times they're typically really funny are the ones that I love or the ones that set up a funny rom-com and set the tone perfectly. Sometimes they end up being enemies to lovers and don't start off on the right foot and it just makes it so much more entertaining. But let me know your favorites in the comments and make sure you click that subscribe button and like this video. And that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.